In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts and data to help us understand why the message from the markets is loud and clear. Thursday evening, 10.23 p.m. Eastern Time, we had some good setups heading into Friday's session and the market delivered. BIL one to three month T-bills in the ETF world relative to XLK, which is the tech sector for the S&P 500 index. For conversation's sake, let's call this cash relative to tech. See, during the financial crisis here, 2008-2009, the ratio is above the weekly cloud, telling us that the probability of being happy with cash is quite a bit higher than XLK in this window. You can see walking forward, that's extremely rare. Started to develop a similar look last year. The cloud is turning green here. This is October. The ratio was above the cloud. And again, you really don't see that a lot. What's noteworthy is when the ratio started to fall and more importantly made it, Back below the cloud here, the major low in the S&P 500 was in the rear view mirror. We bought them on March 9th, 2009. This is April here. Something similar just happened this week. For the first time, we have a similar look. BIL divided by XLK is below the cloud, the weekly cloud for the first time. You can make an argument at this point here. Similar to this point in here, which again is after the major low in the S&P 500. Similar situation here near the major low in 2011. You spike above the cloud briefly. Fear here near the major low in 2016. Christmas Eve low 2018. Spike above, come back below. COVID was so short we went into the cloud and then back out after the major low. Moral of the story. This looks different than anything we had in the rearview mirror here during the bear market. And it also looks similar to this point here after the major low was in place. If we zoom in on this portion, all of this just this week, below the cloud, we're also getting the cloud turning from green in favor of cash over tech to red. Brand new signal. March 31st, telling us from a probability perspective, the odds have shifted back in favor of XLK. Convincingly, not yet. We really like to move away from the cloud a little bit, but it's a good start. Also noteworthy for the tech sector, ETF, B-O-T-Z, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, breakout above the downward sloping trend line above all of the moving averages with blue the fastest moving average on top the slopes of the moving averages are turning up our concerning sector xlf we can make an argument was extended from the 200 week moving average it needed a break it came back and this week tagged it for the first time and held gained 3.74 percent for the full week fed policy for a long long time has finally resulted in extremely rare volatility in the treasury market and hence extremely rare volatility in interest rates and that makes its way through the entire market s p 500 we have that cluster look that we've been talking about we're above the cluster we have some white space we're above the downward sloping trend line you can make an argument there's your breakout step one above the downward sloping trend line that's not shown on the chart this is a higher low relative to this low so this would be step two Step three in the optimum buy point, hence why we're taking a measured approach, would be if you can print a higher high above this level. Noteworthy from this point forward, we only had a short stay below the moving averages. Tech sector ETF XLK closed March 31st, very similar to the chart of the S&P 500 or SPY. One difference, it has made the higher high thus this week. On paper, from a probability perspective, we hit the optimal entry point. Breakout, retest, higher high. So what is the message from the charts? We're in a new bull market? No, that's not the message. The message is the markets are trying to flip from a primary downtrend to a primary uptrend. The term trying acknowledges that we live in an uncertain world and we always think in probabilities, the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening, regardless of the setups. The probability of bad things happening is never zero. 
If you're a trend follower and you study history, you may be aware of the nightmare scenario. 1946 out to 1949, where you get whipsawed above and below the 200-week moving average shown in red. And all of that takes place over approximately a 3.5-year period. There's no question this is something that has been and continues to be on our radar, meaning we think it's relevant. Thus, it might be helpful to compare the two periods head to head. 1945 to 1949 over here, this week over here. One reference point, we tagged the upward sloping 200 week moving average in October approximately 168 calendar days ago. If we fast forward 168 calendar days from a similar point in 1946, it takes us to May 9th, 1947. Trends, weak. Trend strength score, 11. The long-term score, 8. That's on a scale of 0 to 100. How does this point here compare? Similar in a concerning manner? You may remember last week we said objectively the move off of the October low was impressive. This is what we were talking about. Using the scale between 0 and 100, present day trend scores this week, 99% the long-term score pushing 100, significantly stronger than these numbers. Also noteworthy, compare this relative to the 200 week to the white space that we've experienced in the present day. What does that mean? It means this is a stronger trend. That's what this means as well. Doesn't negate our concerns here. It dilutes them a little bit. The period was also noted in a recent research piece from Dean Christians. Here's his Twitter handle. We agree wholeheartedly with Dean that 1946 to 1949 is something that we need to be aware of and we need to have it in our contingency planning process. And if we didn't think it was relevant, we wouldn't cover it. So using this comparison, present day looks quite a bit different relative to this period in here. Like us, Dean used a logical and objective approach and came up with two signals, consolidation signals, in 1947 that were similar to a signal that was fired recently in 2023. So since our signal was the first signal, let's compare the present day to this point here, which is approximately October 31st, 1947. Trend strength scores a little bit better here, 58, call it 79, but still quite a bit weaker relative to what we have in the present day. Also noteworthy, this is more of a waterfall type decline with most of the decline in this compressed window here in terms of duration. Quite a bit different with the zigzag patterns here. It's really this period that is similar in the present day. So during the rest of the video, does the rest of the evidence, the weight of the evidence, align with this type of figure and this type of figure? Which basically tells us this week looks better than any week during the entire bear market. What else can we learn from history? This week, have this set up at the end of the month. This is Thursday, but Friday we were up. So this still looks similar, only better at the end of the month. We're looking for cases historically going back to 1940 where you have at least one monthly close below the red 40 month and the blue 10 month moving average. And then we need three consecutive monthly closes back above both moving averages, which is what we printed at the end of March. One month, two months, three months. And it's also extremely noteworthy, especially when you study history, and in our case, during the entire decline between the peak and the third monthly close above the MAs, blue, the 10 month, never dropped below the 40 month. And that's indicative of a strong trend. Similar signal out here, but this trend looks a lot weaker. Similar situation here. We get signals here and here. But this is a lot weaker with blue spending a considerable amount of time below red. Strong trend, but not as strong as the present day with blue dropping below. Similar situation here. Can't resolve it without dropping below. This is just a little bit weaker trend relative to what we've seen so far in 2022, 2023. This is still strong. 
Again, blue below, looks a little bit different than our case. Significantly different with the cross. This is the more common look, as you can see, with the faster moving average dropping below the slower one during a major decline. 1973-74 bear market, significantly different. You get the cross early in 1974. Stock market doesn't bottom until late in 74. Signal doesn't come until 1976, telling you how much weaker this decline is in terms of the degradation to the trend relative to the present day. Blue stays below red for several months. Again, a weaker trend. 1982, a major low. You can see it's somewhat similar to the present day. Blue drops below, doesn't stay there very long, but still different from what we have so far in 2022-2023. Here's a case that's similar to ours. Trend is so strong here when we drop in 1990, blue never really gets anywhere close to red. You get a very short one month stay slightly below both moving averages and you get the three monthly closes above in 1991. Not surprisingly, the strong trend ends up delivering strong performance. The degradation in the trend in the dot-com bus bear market is really just in a different league. You don't get the signal until 2004. We already have this signal in the present day. Same thing with the financial crisis. Look at the slope of the 10-month moving average and compare that to the present day. Again, the trend is damaged in such a way that the signal does, it doesn't come in 2009, it doesn't come until 2010. Another one that looks similar. Short stay below, trend is so strong and prior to the COVID bear market, and not surprisingly, the strong trend produces much better performance walking forward. I'm not sure if you caught this the first time through, but we just found something that also separates the present day from this highly concerning window here in 1946 out to late 1949. It's the same period here. Look how much weaker the trend is in here. Blue spends a long time below red. But eventually, really good things happen. Compare this to this. They're significantly different, and this is much stronger in its present form. Why is that relevant? The trend was so strong here that the decline really didn't derail the trend. The trend was so strong here that the decline really didn't derail the trend. The trend was so strong here that the decline really didn't derail the trend. So we know in the COVID case, really good things happened after the visit to the 40-week moving average down here. And you can see in the 1991 case, strong trend, really good things happen after you tag it and move away and get your three consecutive monthly closes above both blue and red. Also noteworthy, get the signal in 1991 here similar to what just happened at the end of this month. Some similarities here, NASDAQ 100 monthly, short stay below the 40 month moving average in red. Looks significantly different thus far from this, significantly different from the dot com bust bear market, but it does look similar to 1990 and 1991 and after that, really, really good things happen for a long period of time. If you study trends, short stays that stay back above, good things tend to happen. You tend to resume the prior trend relatively quickly. Not a prediction here, but that's the way it works if you study charts. NASDAQ 100 monthly, you can pause your video player. We just had the first close back above blue here in 2023. That type of close comes after the major low in the dot-com bust bear market and after the major low in the financial crisis. I've covered this before, Dow Jones composite average. This is monthly, this is the 40 month moving average. Short stay, we just talked about this. Good things happen, this is not a short stay. Bad things happen, not a short stay. Bad things happen, extremely short stay thus far. In this case, once you drop below, you don't come back above until it's over. 
Once you drop below, you don't come back above until after the major low is in place. You can pause your video player here. Studies that say keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes. Yardeni Research tweet from Urban Carmel. Present day similar to 1991, good period, 1995, 2003, 2009, 2016. Anything else that speaks to this concept on the right side of your screen? Rally ends below the line. Rally ends at the line. Rally ends below the line. This looks different. Measured pace with our moves because we're still in a range here. One good thing that did happen before the close is we were able to close above this gap. The longer it holds, the more relevant it becomes. Is it possible we need to come back Retest some of this down here? Absolutely, positively, yes. Is it possible we're going to bounce around in this range for a while? Absolutely, positively, yes. But for the most part, you break above the downward sloping trend line here the, in blue, above the 200-day moving average. Most of this mess in here occurs above a flattening out and trying to turn up 200-day. This would be step one of breaking this trend line right here. This would be a higher low relative to this low. If we can print a higher high above this intraday high, we've already done it above this closing high. You can see this is higher than this. But we'd like to see this intraday high exceeded as well. We've been talking for several weeks about how we're concerned about monthly momentum. We don't want this look. We don't want this look. This is the look we want. And this is the look we want. This looks a lot better. Two weeks in a row where good things have happened. Doesn't predict anything, but it does look better than this, and it does look better than this. Exact same concepts here. 2002, we want to avoid turning down near the zero line. 2008, we want to avoid turning down near the zero line. Right here, it looks like a strong push above the zero line, closed at 3.51. Similar situation here. We'd love to see weekly MACD close above the zero line. 88 this week for the NASDAQ. That's telling us we're trying to establish now a new weekly uptrend, which looks to be in line with this breakout here below the downward sloping trend line. Also trying to make a stand at a logical level an upward sloping 200 week. If you know your market history, turning up 1982, turning up 1984, turning up after the 87 crash, turning up after the recession in 1990, here's 1991, turning up in 1995, turning up at the end of the dot-com bus bear market, turning up pretty much at the exact spot of the major low in 2009, trying to turn up at month end, well, turning up at month end in the present day. Baby steps. We wanted to see some progress here. We have some tangible progress. We closed this week at 58.01. That's above the highest close during the dot-com bust bear market at 57 and change, and above the highest close during the financial crisis bear market at 56 and change. We're at 58 and change. Still like to see us exceed this level here, but it's probably fair to say this decline in here, a massive decline, is more similar to this massive decline or this massive decline relative to this relatively tame decline. RSI on April 9th of 2009 was 50. Today, we're at 58. Doesn't predict anything speaks to odds. We'll cover this in the past, but all of this told us that this move in here might be different relative to the rear view mirror. Earlier in Q1, rejected at the downward sloping trend line. The candle, the wick goes above. We can't close above it. Almost just the opposite here. Now our wick comes down, tags the trend line, and we rally off of it. Potential resistance here, that would be the bad news. The good news, blue, above red, price above red. Price came down and tagged red and rallied and printed a higher weekly high. Lagging span, now above price. All of this looks better than what we had in the rear view mirror. Still some work to do. Covered this many times. This type of look, early stages of a trend, can be a good thing. 
Late stages of a trend, it can be a bad thing. Early stage, good things happen. Early stage, good things happen. I'll be fair to say this is potentially early stage. 2011, below, above, good things happen. Below, above, 2016, good things happen. Christmas Eve 2018, COVID low. Similar look here, relatively short stay above the 50 month. Turning up on the momentum front. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline, came back, retested it. Right now we're holding the breakout. Look shaky, held at a logical area, rallied hard. Back above the 30 week moving average in blue. Short stay down here, 200 weeks, sloping up in red. The moment, checking all of the boxes because we closed back above the cloud. Still have work to do, still a little dicey, but a lot better than dropping below red this week. I showed this chart many times, including Twitter this week, saying it's concerning. We zoom in, it may be flipping too encouraging. Instead of turning down near the zero line. Remember in the bear markets, we don't want this type of look. Momentum turning down near the zero line. Momentum turning down near the zero line. Well, that's what we had earlier this week because this was negative. But by the end of the week, now it looks like it's trying to make a stand above the zero line. That's almost the opposite. And look at this impulsive, confident looking candle here at the end of the week. To make an argument, this is the type of candle that you get at the early stages of a move. It doesn't predict anything, but that's impulsive and positive. Earlier in the week, below all of this, rallied by the end of the week back above it. Also, momentum trying to turn up above the zero line to be determined. Told us to keep an open mind. This is as of the 30th. This was March 16th. Notice how much better we look today. Compare it to this and this. It's noteworthy here. This is January of 2023 where my cursor is. Really just bottomed this year in the MYSE composite. Very, very similar to the NASDAQ. Made a stand. Very logical gappy area in here. Short stay below an upward sloping 200 week came back and tagged that upward sloping 200 week symmetry here 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 held above the 200 week with this candle here and then a nice impulsive looking candle here that can signal the start of a new move look at this kind of a false breakdown rally back above this downward sloping trend line and back above the upward sloping trend line daily chart Nice move today on Friday above the downward sloping trend line. And look, price much lower than back here in March. Momentum higher. I pointed this out a few times on Twitter when things were looking shaky. Said if you're trying to keep an open mind, this chart might help. Had a nice bullish divergence relative to price and now breaking out above the downward sloping trend line. This, early January. If you pause your video player here, see all this white space down here? This looks different than all of this. Impulsive, impressive, at a very, very important area. The intersection of the 30 week in blue, the 40 week in red, and the 50 week in green. The longer it holds, the more meaningful it becomes. Notice the last two weeks, unimpressive. Look at the wick, the wick kind of rejected in here almost the polar opposite this week. We have a little bit of a tail in the moving averages and the bulk of the candle, the strong buying power above the moving averages. Daily, nice, strong, impulsive looking candle above the downward sloping trend line. In fact, there's the candle right there. That's a good looking candle. Trends and moving averages work the same way. Probably fair to say this looks like a downtrend this looks like we may be trying to flip to an uptrend. High, higher high, low, thus far a higher low and a turning up look here, similar to this point here in early January, and similar to this point here, right near the October low. 
A lot of crazy moves with the banking issues and the Fed's special facilities, bailouts, whatever you want to call them. In March, we broke down below the upward sloping trend line from the October low. We were unable to clear the downward sloping trend line from the February high. So we were down here below all of that. We rallied sharply and closed at the end of the week back above the upward sloping trend line and above the downward sloping trend line. Impressive. 130 minute S&P. Cloud flips from red to green. Lagging span now back above price. Price above red, blue above red. Paused right here at a logical area here and here had a little zigzag lightning bolt look and moved higher. Hadn't used an SMA envelope in quite some time and saw it on Jake's feed. So hats off to him. I think you can find a study in his feed if you're patient, if you scroll down. 2009 major low, you come to the bottom of the envelope here, stall. Come up to the top, you're rejected. But eventually after this, you get above and you really start to move. Make an argument here at this point here, somewhat similar to this point here. And this point here is somewhat similar to this point here. Why? Right here, as we move away, you can see the envelope flattens out and turns up, flattens out and turns up. Well, we have a little bit of a flattening out and turning up look right down here. That's to be determined, of course. We could still be in a look like this. But what you want is you want this to stay above the lower bound here. So far, so good. Talking about the tight cluster and the coiling looks, you can get big moves here, volume by price, above it, above the moving average cluster. Right now, blue, the fastest moving average is on top and price is above all of the moving averages. And it turns out, for the S&P anyway, not for a lot of other charts that plunged in this direction, the S&P had a short stay below the moving averages and popped back above. What else do we need to happen? We need to make a higher high above this high. In some respects on this time frame, this would be your optimum get more aggressive entry point, let's say above 4200. Hence the measured approach this week. Similar look here, you can see the downward sloping trend line, the upward sloping trend line. We lost both of them and closed back above both. And you can see the volume by price area in here. And notice, all of this and this today, impulsive looking confident candle here. Also noteworthy, resistance in March at this gap here. Today, we did stall at the gap intraday and we ended up blowing right through it with this candle. Doesn't predict anything, but all things being equal, this looks better than this failed rally attempt here in early March. Anchored volume weighted average price. Think of it this way. This speaks to cost basis. So when we're down here, anybody on average, volume weighted average price, that took a position at the COVID low, the COVID high, the October low, and took a position anywhere in here, all of them for the most part were at a loss here and unhappy. Just the opposite today. The longer we can stay above, the better. Also noteworthy. Rejected, you really never come back. Rejected, you really never come back. Rejected, we're back sooner than we've been at any other point back here. It's subtle, but meaningful. Still have work to do here. Hence, measured approach. Couldn't clear it. 08, couldn't clear it. We're above it. We're above it. That's a zoom in right there. And look, came down, looked like we were going to lose it. And now you're trying to turn up near the zero line. This would be a really, really good look. Also, notice price relative to the 23-week moving average in 2008. 23 week moving average in 02. Right now, this looks good and another good looking weekly candle in here above an upward sloping 23 week. Weekly trend line here came back, tagged it, rallied, held these areas thus far, 
And this week closed back above a trying to turn back up 30 week in blue. And look at momentum here, back above 50 with a bull cross here. One concern would be lower low on momentum relative to this low. So we want to make some progress on the weekly momentum front. Highest dot-com bus bear market right here when the rally failed in 02, 54.51. Highest on the counter trend rally here, if you know your market history, that's about mid-May of 2008, and you fall hard when Lehman collapses in here. Highest we could print on a weekly basis was 54 and change. Earlier, 2022, 54 and change. This week, 55 and change. It's a subtle difference, but something that we were unable to do in the last two to three weeks. Longer it holds, the more meaningful it becomes. Also a nice look up here with the Bollinger Bands. Weekly trend line closing basis came back, tagged it, rallied. Daily false breakdown, October low, back above the downward sloping trend line from February, back above the 50 day. 10 year yield showing some weakness on the daily. Jerry's still out on the weekly or still in an uptrend, probably fair to say. World Technology Index Weekly. Downward sloping trend line, break above the trend line, a higher low relative to these lows, and we printed a higher weekly high, which would be step three relative to a probabilistic trend change. And all of this consolidation occurred, for the most part, above an upward sloping 200 week. Resistance, 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 present day. Breakout looks like a retest. All of it occurred above an upward sloping 30 week momentum trying to turn back up and trying to turn back up above the zero line. Still has work to do. Back above the cloud at the end of the week instead of crashing below red. Bullish breakout, breakdown, recaptured this level. Could be a lot worse checking all of the bullish boxes. A bear market or more concerning look would see you come into this area here, which still may happen. It just hasn't happened yet. Some basing here, some work to do. I think we mentioned this the last two or three weeks. See the cloud here, how thin it is? That's telling you that this shoulder head, shoulder formation has a better chance of breaking out because resistance is getting weaker and weaker. It's constructive. 2011 major low here in the stock market, major COVID low, risk on reversal, risk on reversal against gold this week for the full week. Nothing that definitive, but down 3.25% in the same general vicinity. Also, momentum and price waning a little bit against gold. Could this still break out? Oh yeah, it's been moving sideways. It could still move in this direction. Basing, constructive back above all of the moving averages. A little bit of a weak look in here though, more of a downward sloping neckline look. Some work to do on this side of the base. Remember this, go back and look at the dates from earlier in the video and then compare them to momentum turning up, momentum turning up, momentum turning up. Momentum turning up and momentum turning up. End of the month, NASDAQ 100 stocks greater than their 200-day moving average. When you hit this level here, it was OVER in terms of the dot-com bust bear market. When you hit this level here, it was OVER. Rear view mirror is the major low in 2009. Back to a similar level in the present day. It simply speaks to odds. This would be your optimum buy point if this is going to turn. Here's your breakout. Here's your retest. 200 day holds at a logical area here. Comes back and prints a higher high. Downward sloping trend line. Step one. Step two is a higher low relative to this low. And then a higher high. We've had a lot of failures on these setups. Hopefully these impulsive looking candles and the fact there's really not a weekly trend will increase the probability of some of these setups working 
this time. All of this, all of these good things, look at that nice tight cluster. Out of a tight cluster, a tighter cluster, you can get bigger moves. Moving averages are closer together. You get a big move, they spread out. And your optimum buy point here just came this week. We really haven't missed anything here. This is still an excellent entry point in an area, if it works, where you could establish looking out here. Speaking to our approach, yours may vary significantly. You pause your video player, not a bad look. In its present form, not a bad look. Getting this look, we're getting the higher high just as weekly momentum clears zero. And this trying to turn up. Said we wanted to see improvement on these weekly momentum readings. Highest we could get here in 02 on the failed rally attempt is roughly 53. Highest we could get here on this failed rally attempt in the spring of 08 was 60. This week we closed at 61.2. Not earth shattering, but stronger than this and stronger than this. Decline, consolidation, left, head, shallower right shoulder, which tends to be bullish. And you can even make an argument somewhat of an upward sloping neckline. This still would be your optimum entry point. So not really late on anything here if it works. You add, in a, you add under our approach, if you buy and things start to get profitable, you add. If it doesn't get profitable, you stop. Speaks for itself, short stay below an upward sloping 200 week. The trend got extended, came back to the longer term trend, short stay, holding left head right neckline. Longer above, more relevant it becomes. Not predicting anything. Covered this many times. It speaks for itself. You can pause your video player. Credit markets also basing. This is 13 months down here. Left head right above the neckline. Longer it holds, more meaningful it becomes. And notice, see, moving averages. This is a trend getting extended down here now we're tightening up with a clustery look price above this speaks to expectations about interest rates inflation and the fed as well we want to see more right shoulders complete in the credit markets that's one concern and there are concerns it's never perfect what a mess but it seems to be resolving to the downside here, at least for now. Longer below, more meaningful it becomes. We can say this, it does look different relative to this in here in 2022. End of the month, you're above 50. 2003, you were above 50. 2009, after dropping down here, above 50. Got to come down below 20. 2019, above, and we're above. Trying to make a stand, still checking all of the bullish boxes. We were not checking all of the bullish boxes when we were in the cloud. Really like to see this make a higher high. Consolidation, neckline, horrible retest look, but it's trying to pass. You can see relative to RSP here. Constructive look at the end of the week. It's a weekly chart. Is it possible that we were in an uptrend here, we got extended and we just needed to come back to trend and then rally and it looks like momentum is trying to turn up right at that all important zero line to be determined. No question we're trying to make a stand near a logical area. Tech Weekly, a lot of improvement from this point here. Price above the cloud. We didn't have that last week. The cloud flipping from red to green. We did not have that last week. This just happened this week. Price above red, blue above red, lagging span above price. Still near the cloud. I'm not out of the woods yet, but significant improvement relative to down here. Down here, you're not checking any bullish boxes. We could debate all day long about QE versus no QE. The money pumped into the system unequivocally has an impact. At a minimum, it's preventing the banks from liquidating securities under duress. 
and right, wrong, or indifferent, there's no question it impacted sentiment in the short run. And maybe more importantly, the market believes, right, wrong, or indifferent, that the Fed is going to step in. They're not going to let really anything in the banking system collapse. That may not be true, but that's what the market believes at this point. Thus, it's been relevant. Haven't broken out of the range despite all of the good setups. Hence, the measured approach. You need to see a sustained break of 4,200. And we've got some levels between Friday's close and 4,200 as well. But this is the granddaddy. Even if we stay in the range, it's possible that the floor of the range will come up. Basically how an uptrend works. Higher highs and higher lows. Not a prediction. One of our holdbacks here is we need to see our positions get more profitable or profitable before we can add. And that shouldn't be a problem if these setups work. It's not a big ask. 100% normal and to be expected. If it looks constructive, we may add on weakness. Just have to see how it plays out. This is something we've been talking about for a long time, and we are making some progress here. We still need to see a little more, but we did check some significant, this doesn't look like a bear market boxes this week. Haven't really had this until now, and typically, if you're going to get a sustained rally, history says this is relevant. Also, tech is a big, big weighting in the standard S&P 500, so it's relevant for SPY, VU, and similar ETFs. Right now, strength in the S&P 500, tech, NASDAQ 100, growth, foreign developed, Europe, global stocks, XUSA, and energy. Not sure if the energy and materials and commodity complex trade is really a residual of past leadership or those trends are going to remain in place and we have a market that's just accepting that the Fed is going to accept higher inflation going forward. It's to be determined. Remember earlier we had a chart that showed XLF made a stand at the upward sloping 200 week. As long as that's the case, that's a good sign relative to ongoing concerns about banks. This is the message from the markets. The message is not anything definitive. It speaks to odds. And there's no question that we have observable improvement on many fronts and on numerous time frames and with multiple asset classes. Nothing's changed here. No assumptions regarding any topic on any time frame. And we all know the only way any of this is going to work is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.